Hello, everybody. Welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're in the lab looking at how to use a DC electronic load. Now, these instruments are very important for power system testing and for battery testing, and because I've been doing some testing of power systems just recently for some client projects, I thought we would jump into the lab and I'd show you how to use these instruments. Let's jump in and get started. So in this video, what we're gonna do is go over how to test a little power supply just like this board that I have on the bench. What we're gonna do is we're gonna power it up with this voltage source, and then we're going to test its power output with this DC electronic load. Now, what is a DC electronic load? Well, when I have a power system, it's going to put out at some voltage and current. And this is just a DC-DC converter, and it's converting the voltage that I put out from this power supply into some other power that is then delivered to this DC electronic load. The function of the DC electronic load is to act like a precision adjustable resistor. So it's an electronically adjustable unit. It essentially regulates the voltage and current coming into the unit and thus the power dissipated in the unit and you can adjust it to different values. So what this unit lets you do is it lets you test what the maximum current output is, what the maximum power output is. It lets you determine when the power starts to drop out. So when you start to near short circuit conditions and it allows you to test all these things without manually switching between different loads connected to the output of your power supply. So the way this works is I have a power supply right here. It's currently set for seven volts output with a maximum of five amps output. So you can see it's in constant voltage mode. So it's always going to be regulating to constant voltage of seven volts and then maximum power output or maximum current output of five amps. So maximum of 35 watts power output. Now, when I turn it on, you can see that my supply turns on and my supply is turned on to target a 15 volt power output from the output side of this boost converter. Now, once I turn on the DC load, you can see here that the DC load is drawing 1.46 watts of power at 100 milliamps. And what the DC load allows me to do is cycle through different values of the drawn current. And as I cycle through different values of the drawn current, I then get a measurement of the power that is being drawn from this power regulator. So one of the reasons that we might use a DC electronic load to test this power supply, aside from just trying to get a measurement of the current output and the voltage output, is so that we can test its regulation in different modes. Currently, it's running in constant current mode, meaning that I have a constant current that I'm trying to draw out of this power supply, and then I'm testing the power output at each of those current levels. Then as I cycle through different values of the input voltage and output voltage, I can get different measurements of the output current and the output power. And what this does is it lets me develop power conversion efficiency curves across different values of the input voltage. Now, this is really important for wide input boost converters or buck boost converters. The reason is that as you get down to the low end or the high end of the input voltage range, what can happen is you can see a drop in the efficiency of the converter. And this allows you to determine the input voltage range at which you're going to see maximum efficiency. Another important measurement that I can take with this instrument is I can actually get a noise measurement on the output side of this power supply. So what I can do is as I iterate through different values of the output current limit, you can see here on my oscilloscope that I get different values of the noise. And so if I just increase here the resolution horizontal on my oscilloscope, and then we adjust the trigger level, eventually I can get a nice stable waveform here that gives me a really clear view of what the noise level is on the input side here in yellow and the output side of this boost converter. So you can see here on this output side, we have pretty good ringing going on. If I just increase the horizontal or the time resolution, you can see it's pretty steady ringing, looking like about four volts peak to peak. So that's quite a bit of ringing. And this allows you to look at your circuit and then you can say definitively whether this is going to be too much noise. And then you can figure out some ways to try and reduce that noise either with filtering or possibly with additional capacitance. Now, if we just run this and then we cycle through to another current value, you can eventually see here that as I increase the current and set it, you can see that the noise starts to increase. So we can separate these curves just a little bit We'll back out and you can see here how much noise we're actually getting. So we actually get quite a bit of noise as we start to draw more and more current 
into this power supply and then output it onto the output side into our load. So this is where we're starting to get to low load conditions. Once we get into lower load conditions, we might start to see significant ringing on the output. And this can be really problematic for supplies that need to have very stable voltage output, such as if this were going to be used to power a system that needs to do precision analog measurements, or if you just need to have very quiet power, like say, for example, in a digital system. So just a few tips about using DC electronic loads and pairing them up with the right power supply. There are a few things you need to know to be successful and to make sure that you're getting accurate measurements. First things first, pay attention to the power rating for your DC load. I've actually blown up a load by putting too much power through it, so make sure you pay attention to the power rating. Next, you need to make sure that whatever value of power output you're trying to measure, that much power can be accommodated by your supply. So you'll notice here that I have a current limiting power supply. I need to make sure that the current limit is set high enough to be able to give me enough power for the power range I'm targeting for this little power supply. So here I had my current limit set to five amps. Here we're drawing 500 milliamps, but 500 milliamps on the output requires 1.15 or 1.16 amps on the input. So you need to make sure that your input power can provide enough current, especially if you're doing something like this with a boost converter. That boost converter can require a lot of current coming from the uh, input power supply simply because the output is stepping up the output voltage. Next, if you're going to be doing noise measurements with a power converter using a DC load and an oscilloscope, make sure you select the right probes. Now these are 150 megahertz probes and they're not super expensive. They're actually the default probes that came with this Hantec oscilloscope. Just make sure that you use probes that are able to measure within the range that you need in order to be able to resolve any noise on the input and the output. Also, so depending on the output voltage value, you may want to use a high attenuation probe. These probes have a 10x attenuation setting. It's a good idea to have probes in general that have a 1x and a 10x attenuation setting so you can switch between them depending on what it is you want to measure. So aside from these points, DC electronic loads are pretty simple to use. You just adjust the voltage and current that you're targeting, take your measurement of your power output, compare that to your measurement of your input power, and then you can get a pretty accurate measurement of your power conversion efficiency. In an upcoming video, I'm actually going to take a custom designed power supply. We'll hook it up here and we'll go through a full set of tests and then we'll be able to get some efficiency curves and you'll get to see what those look like. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to tune in to the next video where we do some testing with a custom power supply. And of course, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And finally, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.